Our next project is going to be an illustrated word. In the illustrated word, you're going to create a themed composition that includes text, an image, a texture, and a brush. And we're going to talk about layer modes and layer styles. So each of these pieces you can see here, they have a theme to them. They have elements that are similar, or that kind of give them a similar feel. So we're going to put a piece together like this right now. So I'm going to jump over to Photoshop. Um, I've already created a new document, right? This is how we should start all pieces. A new document that is for print, because um, we're going to pr be printing this. It's not going to go on the web or anything, any, any of those other options. Um, it's going to be the size of a sheet of paper, so I'm going to go leather and then letter, I'm um, sorry, and then um, the orientation, we're not doing the figure like we just did with the monster, so we're going to go landscape, because it's going to be like a title piece, kind of, um, and I'm going to set my orientation to landscape, and then go ahead and hit create. It's going to be 300 pixels per inch, and have a white background, leave all that stuff alone. And that gives me my blank document. So I actually have two, so I'm going to go back to my front one. All right, so the first thing that we're going to go do is we're going to hop onto the internet and we're going to go look for a texture. Now, a texture is the way something feels or looks like it feels. So here I Google texture, and I'm looking at some different textures that are here for some different elements. Um, it's, if you want something in particular, you can be more specific, right? So I clicked on, or I chose brick wall texture, because I'm going to do a, like a graffiti, like an urban type of piece. So I've got brick wall texture here. I'm going to go tools, um, click on tools. I already did this. Um, I, this would say size. I went to large. And then I clicked on labeled for reuse here. Because what I don't want, if I go not filtered by license, I'm going to get a lot of eye stock photos, ones that have the watermarks on them. That belong to someone, right? I, I don't want those. I want free images that are just up there on the internet. So I went in and I, I chose, I believe I chose this one. And um, I, you know, this is my thumbnail. This is, or this is my thumbnail. This is the full size. I went and I dragged it into Photoshop and the image I got was this. Now I know that this is still a thumbnail because the name here thumbnail and how it's so small here in Photoshop so that wasn't right. That didn't go right. Even though the size is over a thousand by a thousand it's I'm not getting the full image here. So I'm going to actually click on it because I can tell PX here these are free downloads. Free image downloads. So I can either download it. This is not the download. This is where you get a little tricky in here. I can click on this to download it and that one will go into my downloads folder or I can pull this image right here into Photoshop. Photoshop um, and then click on let it go in Photoshop and then it will open up in there. Okay, I already have this image in Photoshop and you can see the image, the difference, right? This is 2.68 megabytes versus not even a megabyte, not, not even 200 kilobytes. So this is the, the much better, larger image to use. And the reason why we're starting, and actually I close that other one, the reason why we're starting in a new document instead of, um, instead of, just using this because I don't really know what size this is. If I went to image and I chose image size, I know the pixel dimensions and it's actually 12 by 8 so that's the size of a sheet of paper but the resolution is different and if you want, I don't know, I, I, it's, it's by, the best thing that you can do is be consistent in your resolution because that would avoid getting anything that looked blurry. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm not working in this document. I'm actually taking this and I'm dragging this into my new untitled piece. And you can see how small it is or how small it looks. But I'm going to pull it to fit the space, right? And it's, and it's got the size there and it's... It's a little bit off in the dimension, but it's not going to be that big of a deal. Now, um, Photoshop, when you when you grab the corner, you make something bigger. It has constrained proportion, so it's going to keep the width and the height similar. Now, this is a little bit, I wouldn't recommend this with bodies or with text, but I'm actually holding shift on the keyboard, and that will take it out of its proportion, no constraint. Right, and so then that way I can kind of fit it to the to the image there. So this is layer one that your requirements, and I'm going to double click right here where it says layer one. I'm going to call this layer texture because we're we're going to name these layers as well. Okay, let me jump back onto the internet. Two other things that I want you to add or include in here. Let me close these guys. We're good with these. We're good with that. Is a brush. So I went to brushking.eu. Right, that's my my great brush site. I look for free Photoshop brushes. And you can, if you click on, you know, your, this is the home screen. If you wanted to be specific and look for a specific kind of brush, you can look into categories here. Um, you're going to click on the brush when you find the brush that you like. Often the image they show you is what a montage of those brushes would look like. And anybody can make a brush. And in graphic design 2, we talk about how to make a brush. And I have a tutorial for that if you want to go and look in the graphic design 2 channel. But we're going to download this brush. We're going to use this brush. I'm going to click download. It's going to go. In, there's two places it can go. Mine goes on to a bar at the bottom. You might, you have a downloads over here somewhere, right? You're, you might have a bouncing. Mine is set to do something different. You might have a bouncing um, bin here, a folder. That would be it. The other place to find downloads is in the finder. And you can go under downloads. And I have 100,000 things downloaded. But you're looking for a zip file. So if I double click on the zip file, 
then I get a folder. I'm going to open up that folder. I want this ABR file. And I've already downloaded this brush, but you would double click on this brush. Let's see if it'll work again. Okay, now the brush is here in Photoshop. So let me grab my paintbrush tool. Um, I'm going to go to my brush options that are up here, and it should be the last brush now. Now, how I'm viewing my brush tool on uh, my brush tips here, um, I've also clicked off the name and the stroke. I'm just looking at the tip, right? If I click on name, it gives me a big name. I, I just don't. I don't want it to be so busy. So I'm, I'm just looking at the tip. This guy right down here will toggle your brush bigger and smaller. And then, so these are the brushes that I just downloaded. Actually, I've now I've downloaded them twice, right? And you can delete those, but that's that's another thing. We'll talk about that later. So there's my brushes there. Um, I want to use brushes, but you know what? One of the things I want you to play with here is layer styles, right? Which would be these effects that we add to layers and layer modes, which is right here. And I don't have any layers yet to do either of those things with. So I'm going to create a layer for my brushes. Let me double click on this so that I make sure that I am on my highlighted brush layer whenever I am brushing, um, and then I can modify the modes and the in the styles, and that's a, that's what I want there. So um, I'm going to do the brush, but before I go and play with the brush here, because I'm going to show you some brush stuffs, I'm going to jump over to also I'm going to go to what's called Defont, and this is a great free font website. Um, this is the home page for Defont, but if you come up into here, you can be more specific. If I wanted curly. Uh, fonts or here's um, like an LCD right like something like look very digital or medieval there's so many options here so I'm going with an urban type of thing so there happens to be a graffiti section so look how fun that is so I'm looking at like now graffiti type fonts you can even preview what you want it to say right like if I wanted to say graffiti I can click in there I can type in graffiti or urban or you know whatever whatever word I want to throw in there you know to kind of showcase what I'm doing uh, street art I could do anything like that and then I would see what that font would look like um, kind of written out, right? Like when I when I go to use it in Photoshop. So let me see if I find a font that I like. Find a font that you think looks well. I kind of I kind of like this. It's got an inside and an outside, which is pretty cool. But for demonstration's sake, I'm going to go full filled in. So I'm going to go with this one right here. I'm going to click download. Okay, downloaded it just like the brush. Again, if it doesn't download here, it's not in a bouncing folder here. Um, I always go show finder, and it's going to show me that little finder. It's the same same view as that little finder guy. Downloads. Here's a zip file again. I double click. It opens it up. I open it up here. I am looking for an OTF or a TTF file. When I double click on that, it should bring me to this screen, which would say install font. Install. And now that font is there for me to choose. It's called Mars to Nevin of Snevinesnik. So I I guess I'll find it when I get into Photoshop. All right, back in Photoshop, right? Let me take my T tool. This is my text tool. This would type vertical. This is going to type horizontal across. Um, and these are mask ones, and I'll, we're going to go over those later. So I'm not going to create a text box. I'm just going to click a single click, and it's going to give me lorem ipsum, which is a it's a Latin for, I don't know, graphic placeholder. I'm not even sure what it means. But I want to type out my word. Um, did I spell that correctly? Let me, you know, that's kind of a big deal. Um, sure, maybe one, two. All right. Um, now I'm going to take my move tool, and at that point I can stretch it bigger, right? Now there's a few different ways that I can do this. I'm stretching it big. This is because I don't have a text box that I can do this, by the way. Let me double click on that, or I can click on this to apply the transformation. I'm going to go back to my T tool. And this would make a new text box, right? If I wanted more text box, it would make a new one down here. If I come up into here and I click across this way, boo, then I can change the font. So here's the style of the font. Um, I believe mine was called Mars There we go. Okay. Um, this would give me any styles for the font, bold or italics. This is the size of the font. You can come in here. You can see this little guy. I can kind of stretch it that way. That's another way to stretch it larger. And then this is the color of the text. For now, we're going to play with the color of the text. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it white. Um, we're going to play with the color of the text in a moment in our layer styles. There. So I'm going to go ahead and stick it over there. Um, that didn't change. So let me go. I'm going to call this text. All right, I'm going to create a new layer now, and this layer is going to be for my brush. So you can see I've got like a drippy brush. I've got a brick wall. I've got this um, text layer that says graffiti. So let's start playing. Um, I'm going to put the brush. I'm going to look how I moved it below the text. I'm going to play with my brushes in here. Let me grab my paintbrush. Um, again, up here, right, this is where it shows me the different brushes that I just downloaded. Here's, yeah, these are the different brushes I just downloaded. When I click on them, 
This is the size of the brush here. This is the rotation. I can rotate the brush right here. I can see what, you know, it's hard. The only thing is it's hard for it to, us to see what it looks like here. If I bring it in, that's how big the brush actually is. If I want to change the size, I can come over here. But the keyboard shortcut, let me just click up here to get rid of this. The keyboard shortcut to change the size of the brush is the brackets next to the letter P. You can go up and down in that way. I think that's a much better way to view what that brush looks like. Now, if I wanted to change the color of my brush, I'm a little bit off the screen. Let me pull that in. I could come down into here. Here's different colors that I can choose from. Let's go with like a deep blue. Let's see what that looks like. All right. And I'm going to put my brush right Boink, put it right there. So see how it's behind the text, right? But on top of the brick wall. Now, what I want you to avoid doing is the same brush twice. The same brush and the same color and the same spot and the same angle. That, that's no good. Command Z. I'm going to go back a step. Um, I'm going to go grab a different brush in the same category, right? Because this is my theme. Uh, maybe this one's going to be a little bit more drippy or, or, or wide there. And I want to show you another place you can edit the brush. I'm going to click on this little guy right here because you have a whole panel of brushes. When I click on that, you see how it can, I actually had, did I have it open? Maybe I didn't, I just opened it. Um, I have, you have a whole panel of brushes. And in here, if I scroll down to the bottom, here's all my brushes. And the cool thing about looking at it in here, you see how you could see my brush? If I use the brackets next to the letter P, I can make it bigger and, and see it in real time there on my screen. I can flip it X and Y, right? If I wanted to be upside down or right side up, if I want to see what that single instance is going to look like, I could space it out. And then this would be the rotation over here. So let me rotate my so let me pick a different color here. And again, that can all stay open while I'm choosing different colors. I'm going to go with like a purple, kind of stay in the same color family. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so it looks like it's kind of kind of right there. Okay. So now you might be thinking, well, hey, that's pretty. I'm going to I'm going to minimize that and kind of actually here it is right here. Look at this. I can move these little panels around and kind of dock them all together. So if I want those brushes back, I could just open that up. You'll get used to seeing those like this. If you want to pull it out so you can see the word, you can do that too. That's kind of nice. Okay, so I'm on this layer right here. I'm going to play with layer modes. So I've got my move tool selected. I am on the brush layer. I'm going to come up into here where it says normal, and I can scroll down with my mouse and look at what happens when those layers blend together. These are called layer modes. Layer modes blend the layers together in different ways. So there might be some really cool effects in here that'll do some cool things and kind of put the color on the bricks a little bit, make it look like it's kind of burned or onto the bricks or actually spray painted onto the bricks. Another place that I can make it lighter so I could see through it is under opacity. But I'll tell you, the mode, I think, is a stronger um, blender, I think, than opacity. So maybe a little combination of both. Maybe a little combination of both be what you like. All right, so I've got or fulfilled that requirement, layer mode. Um, let me go to my text layer now. I'm clicked on that right there. So I'm going to put a layer style on this text. So I'm going to go down to FX, right? Now, we did this just last project with the Frankenstein's monster. We used the drop shadow, but I'm just going gonna, gonna to choose this first one. Right, because it really doesn't matter which one I choose in that pile. It's going to bring up the whole selection. Um, the difference is that this is the one that's going to be highlighted when I open it up. So this is like general blending modes on the layer, right? So I'm general. Th this would be like if I was coming up into here, right? Like if I like, let's say I chose a different here thing here. See how it changed there? Right? It's just like a general blending mode for the text layer. And actually, my text um, disappeared. So I don't want to do that just yet. I'm going to show you that in just a moment. Let me go back to. Oops. Let me go back to normal here. All right, but I do want to show you how you could put a drop shadow on the text. Notice how I'm clicking on the word. I clicked on the word drop shadow. If I went through, I could actually apply all these different things, but that doesn't mean that my options change on the right. If I wanted to change the color overlay, I got to click on it, and then I could come over here and say, yeah, I want the color overlay to kind of tone it down a little bit because I want to see that gradient overlay underneath it, right? So see, I'm kind of... And think of these as layers, right? I, here's, I have, there's blending modes, there's opacity, there's all kinds of things that are already set in there that I can go play with. So you want to click on the word here, not just the, the checks, right? Because when I click on the word, then I get those, oof, that looks really cool. I get these different options that are there. So I, right now, this is a pattern overlay. I made a pattern. You can make a pattern out of anything. Here's a pattern out of tiger stripes that I made for my daughter. And if I size that down, you should be able to see those cool tiger stripes on that text too. So many different options in here to experiment with and play with. So I'm going to take that color overlay off, and I'm going to leave that outer glow in the drop shadow. I think that's pretty cool. Then I'm going to take that drop shadow. I'm going to bring a little bit closer because I, I don't. You know what? I might want to make it look like the tech that 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 graffiti is spray painted on. Right now, it looks like it's popping off, and that's kind of cool too. This one is great for popping off. Bevel and emboss. You can experiment with like how the how deep it is, or if it's up, or if it's down, like the illusion that it creates there. Um, I'm actually going to leave it on bevel and emboss because I want to. Yeah, this is my layer style. This is my layer mode. What if I did a combination of the two, right? So see how it kind of faded out, but now I could see the text in there. 
that is very a very cool effect a very very cool effect to kind of see it kind of both you know both ways the layer style and the layer mode if I wanted to edit the layer styles I could double click in here and say you know what just to make it pop off let's add an outline of what's called a stroke right right now the stroke is navy blue that's kind of cool uh, let's make it a little bit thicker and uh, let's put a mode on that what happens if I put a mode on that like is there a neat mode that would look very cool with it I don't know uh, maybe that one see a little bit so the idea here is that you should experiment right you should be experimenting like having fun with all these different things move the stuff around see what it looks like in different areas of the image right the one of the reasons you put the brush on its own layer so you can move the brush layer around or if I want to you know hey I want to go add to my brushes let me get um another blue color here right let's get a lighter blue I don't like that blue color, but let's see. Okay, so let's pick my brush here. Um, let's get a drippy brush. Yeah, that's cool. Um, let's pull it in here and see what that looks like. I want to fill in like this area right here where I'm still not hit. Ooh, kind of interesting, right? Um, the reason why it looks that brown color is because of that mode, right? I use kind of like a an odd color on that. Um, let me pick a different one in here. So here I'm using the different ways to pick so you can kind of see how and you know how I'm picking them. Another place to pick colors would be in your swatches panel swatches there's, there's you know here's colors that I can choose from here and again I've got that mode on so it's going to do some neat stuff with the colors because of that mode okay, I like where this is going and the idea is that you just experiment right like ooh, that was interesting why did I do that huh there we go you just experiment with some of the different options that are in there right and if you decide okay let me go back to my text layer I don't want it I want it to pop off yeah okay I want it to pop off I want to play with that that's the idea right so I want you to experiment with where things are what another cool thing about the brushes if I don't like it I could take my eraser and I can erase it but I don't have to erase it with just this regular old plain old circle brush I can go erase with that brush too because whenever you download a brush you are using you can use that brush with any tool so let's say I went to this brush this is a different brush but I could erase with this brush so I just kind of erase some of the graffiti was there make it look kind of worn on there um, I could even just throw this whole layer away if I didn't want it I could even take this FX right here um, I could duplicate the effects up if you hold Alt or Option, you can duplicate an effect. See, I'm pulling it. Now I'm going to drop it on the on the um, the paint layer as well. I don't like that as much. But hey, look, I could turn it off, right? I don't have to have it there. If I, or I could take the whole FX and just throw it away. Okay. Texture, brush, text. One more layer we're going to add. I jumped back on the internet. I found this you know, hand spray painting with a can. I selected what I wanted. I'm moving it now into my new piece. I should have titled it left it untitled um, let me stretch it so it's larger so now we look like maybe a hand is actually spray painting this proportion would be a thing but um, I double clicked to apply it notice how I got a little white part in there because this is a layer all its own I could take my eraser tool and well, not with that eraser and I can erase the part that doesn't make sense right or, or if I have a um, I'm a stickler. I'm a terrible stickler for it. I'm using the brackets next to the letter P, um, Command plus and minus to zoom in. Command plus, space bar, turn your um, cursor into a hand tool so you can move your way around. And if I want to get myself super small to do a very good erase job on this, I am a super stickler for like really good erase jobs, right? Really good selections. And I'm, I'm actually there's be there's a better way to do that. Let me do Command Z. What if I took that? Remember that magic wand selects everything of one color, and I just went boink, and then I hit delete, and then it's cleaner, right? I still got those fuzzy edges. Um, if you if you were, if you really wanted to go in and see, I have to think for a second. I have to go slow. If you really want to go in and clean this up, I would highly recommend it. I mean, I think it, I think a good selection is everything, honestly. Like, especially when you're doing a, a montage of stuff, right? Getting that selection right in the first place is, is a great idea. Um, especially if I wanted to, here's another play, way to get the layer styles. Double click on the end there, and that brought up the layer style dialog box. If, say, I wanted to put a drop shadow on that to make it look like it was actually about to write there on the the graffiti piece. Yeah, I kind of put that drop shadow on there. And um, if I zoom in, you'll see that the drop shadow looks much better here than it does maybe in some of the areas where I still could go and clean up. I still have my eraser tool here. Honestly, if you have the time, right? If you have the, if you're if you're done a little bit early, or if you want to make a better selection, I've got tutorials for graphic design too on how to make. There's better way. I could have made a better selection here, but for demonstration's sake, I'm throwing it together. We're just we're learning for the first time. But the sharper that selection, I think the sharper your image ends up looking, right? It's, I mean, it just against the background, it looks that much more realistic. I'm kind of doing that from far away, but even that 
looks pretty, pretty good. Oops. Nice. Made a little sharp there. But um, okay, so you get the idea, right? The, the purpose of this project is to create a themed piece with layer styles and layer modes, right? Layer styles and layer modes. Okay, thanks for watching.